The FDC is a party of brave people. And by the way, the wave that swept across the country is now dying away. They called us about failure. They were moon named seven e. Kijapi ambare ngule. Simani o baba yamba de ngule. Welcome to episode 2 of our podcast series, Uganda's Journey to Freedom by J.B. Monge. Today's episode features the renewed witch hunt of people power supporters and its leaders, the continued detention of NUP MPs and other political prisoners. It also features the fight for opposition supremacy in the liberation struggle of Uganda from seven dictatorship. Now, before, during, and after the previously concluded sham elections, Museveni forces made it their daily routine to hunt and kidnap people power, NUP supporters, and its leaders. Only those who support Bobby Wine were arrested. The exercise actually continued even after the sham elections. And as of today, hundreds of young Ugandans are still in prison, some in unknown detention centers, some we've never heard of them since their kidnap. An example is Johnny Bosco Chivalama, who was kidnapped in 2019 in June. And up to date, no single person, lawyer, family, friends, has ever heard from him. There is also Mzei Damulila, who was kidnapped from Chiseka Market in November 2020. And up to date, no single person, his family, friends, lawyer, has ever heard from him. And of course, very many others that don't even capture media attention. For the past few months, this witch hunt of these Bobby Wine supporters had slightly reduced because of maybe the much pressure put up by Ugandan in different parts of the world, who also made it and actually continue to make it their daily routine to expose these atrocities the Museveni dictatorship commits to innocent Ugandans. But as we speak now, this witch hunt has been renewed. On top of the hundreds who are still in various prisons, for example, Livia Lutaya, who is in Chigo prison, Machete, Waiza in Chitalia, Kato in Mbale, and very many others in various detention centers. Museveni regime again renewed this witch hunt of people power supporters and the leaders of the National Unity Platform. On the 3rd of November 2021, members of NUP, five of them who are actually part of the NUP mobilization committee in Kasese district were arrested and charged with the treason. Five of them were meeting as part of People Power to talk NUP mobilization efforts, which will eventually lead to building structures of the party across the country. The comrades were arrested by the police and the military who found them at the home of the People Power or NUP district chairperson. You need to know these comrades because it is very important. The comrades who were detained include Basisa Brand, that is the NUP district chairperson, Kasese district. The other one is Mumbele Isaac. Uh, there is Bwambale Joffrey, comrades always call him Western Prince. There is Isande Atanazio. And then finally, Kule Oniz. Their explanations about the party activities fell on the ears of the police and the military that came to arrest them. The regime has decided to charge them with treason. Of course, that is shameful but anticipated has always been the case. Treason, 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 treason. His Excellency Bobby Wine confirmed that the NUP legal teams are doing their best to see how they can help these comrades. He also asserted that this is why Dictator Museven is trying very hard to remove bail so that he can detain such comrades and they have no redress under the law. And that such things are why the NUP are consistently rejecting the dictator's schemes to try and sanitize himself, such as iPod. Bobby Wine said, how can they be part of such platforms when the regime views political parties as enemies who must be crushed in such a manner? You must remember that on the 5th November 2021, the Uganda police also came out and pinned NUP people power of a planned countrywide Riots 
with the claims that people power and NUP are planning this due to the continued detention of MPs Seglinya Muhammad, the NUP member of parliament for Kawempe North, Uganda region, and the other one, Honalebo Alan Sewanyana, the NUP MP for Makinde West, Buganda region still. The other reason Museveni police gave is that NUP is planning countrywide protests because Museveni wants to remove bail. In their statement uh, that police gave, it said, We wish to inform the public that the leadership of the joint security agencies has obtained credible intelligence about plans by NUP, the newly formed People's Front for Transition, and other political actors to hold riots and political demonstrations across the country beginning Monday 8th November 2021. The intelligence reveals how NUP has mobilized its political leaders at various levels from members of parliament, councillors and other local actors of violence did you hear that? and other local actors of violence to hold the riots and political demonstrations over the lawful remand of two opposition Honorable MPs, namely Honorable Seglinya Muhammad and Honorable Alan Sewanyana. The other reasons they are fronting rotate around the ongoing bail reforms. On the other hand, the People's Front for Transition has, through their leader, retired Colonel Dr. Chizabes, they called for all forceful means to take over a legitimate government. So, that was a statement. Of course, I just extracted out the most important part. Now, here we have a few points to note because this from police is in black and white so there are a few things to note here one Museveni just like he has always done is playing political cards using security agencies as well as creating confusion in supporters and change seeking Ugandans by linking NUP to the BSJ pressure group of which NUP is not part Museven well knows that what he's doing to MPs Honorable Segrinya and the Honorable Alan Sewanyana is totally unlawful. He knows that it, this is wrong. He also knows that scrapping off bail from the constitution is as well wrong and unlawful. Because he wants to make it appear that if you are arrested of anything, you are guilty until proven innocent. He knows this is wrong and unacceptable. On the other hand, he knows Ugandans are not stupid. They are widely awake. They know that whatever he's doing is wrong. Because this is not the first of its kind from seven to frame the opposition. And it's not the first time he illegally tempers with the constitution. So, having known that Ugandans are, are ahead of all his illegalities, and that any time they can rise up following the deteriorating health conditions of MP Seglinia, and of course, loud voices against his bail reforms. He's now coming up through the police and other security agencies to pick NUP of a planned countrywide protest about his illegal tendencies. As per the constitution, of course, it is legal to protest peacefully, but under Museven dictatorship, it is illegal and it is treason. Quote me right. No one is organizing such events. These are just Museven sponsored narratives and of which People can always come up by themselves without even being told to do so because all these atrocities are done in broad daylight. But why is Museven doing all this? Because that's the most important part. Museven is doing all this to make it illegal for his militia group that disguised as police and military to kidnap and do all sorts of mayhem, plus, you know, carry out illegal arrests of people power supporters and the leaders of NUP found conducting any political activity case in point is the incident i started with of kasese where they arrested the five of nup mobilization committee leaders who were simply discussing about party structures they just met at the home of the nup uh, district chairperson and once police learned about that meeting they came and arrested them charged them with the treason the end result is of course instilling fear within change seeking Ugandans, leaders and of course friends of Uganda. You need to remember also that currently Museveni is coercing MPs, Seglinya and Sewanyana, especially Seglinya, to make public statements testifying that His Excellency Chagulanyi Sentamu Robert aka Bobby Wine was behind the recent spate of killings in Masaka, Buganda region. Remember after court granted these two bail, 
they were immediately violently kidnapped in cars commonly known as drones they were badly tortured Segrinya actually developed serious injuries that resulted into his foot rotting and as we speak now he has serious complications he can't speak well he cannot walk his feet they are rotting he's not getting medical attention as per the recent visit by the president actually when his situation wasn't while in Chitalia prison the one with no medical facilities that could help him out on the friday of 29th november 2021 segrinya was transferred from Chitalia prison and was dumped at mulago but again from there he did not also get medical attention from his explanation all they did was to make a few tests and he was later subjected to coercion to accept their terms if he wanted to be free when his excellence bobby wine made a surprise visit to check on him he discovered from him that state operatives have on several occasions coerced him to denounce his opposition party and apologize to Museven if he wants to regain his freedom after this surprise visit because no one expected it and it was a success he managed to get in mulago uh, hospital and he checked on comrade uh, segrinya muhammad uh, as he was briefing the press after this surprise visit his excellency chagulani sent him but this is what he said he just saw uh, honorable segrinya is in a terrible state one of his food one of his feet is rotting away and the other one is also infected now he's breathing it's very much difficult he says he's in so much pain but most importantly he says he continues to be coerced into apologizing to mr Museveni. he told us that uh, state operatives keep coming to him to coerce him to apologize to Museveni, this on our struggle and uh, say things that he does not believe in um, we tried to encourage him to stay firm, but he's, he's still in very much pain. We just call upon everybody to pray for Sejirinya, but to continue demanding for his freedom, uh, to see that he gets um, the medical attention of his choice, where, which he trusts, which he can be comfortable with. Uh, his Honorable Sejirinya is in a very bad state, and we hope the worst does not happen to him. How hard was it for you to reach in there? We were here before and we were told that some MPs were not allowed to enter with phones. What, 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 yeah, we were not allowed to enter with phones, which was okay with us. Um, all, 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 of course, we just wanted, that's legal, you all know, but we just wanted to see uh, Honorable Sejirinya. And like I said, he's in a very bad state. Honorable Sejirinya has no single caretaker, it's only uh, prison warders inside this ward and like i was saying um, they blocked us from entering with our phones but he informed us that other people are allowed to go in with their phones and to also record him and push him to make statements that he doesn't believe in yes that was his excellency chagulani sentamo robert our president and just to remind you you are listening to episode 12 of uganda's journey to freedom a podcast series by jb mwonge you can access episode one and the rest of the episodes on Spotify, on Breaker, on Applecasts, Radio Public, on YouTube channel, as well as on our website www.jbmwange.com stroke podcast. Or you can simply ask Mr. Google and type in Uganda's Journey to Freedom by JB Mwange and you will get all the other episodes and of course very many more interesting updates of this our journey to freedom. Now let's move to the issue of the fight for opposition supremacy in the struggle to liberate this our country uganda because that is also uh something that we need to uh, talk about uh, now before we go deep into this issue of the fight for opposition supremacy in this struggle uh, let me first play for you this audio the fdc is a party of brave people and by the way the wave that swept across the country is now dying away. They called us about failure. They were moon M70. 
Kuja pia ambale ngule. Simani o baba ya ambale ngule. So we ask people who thought our strength relied on General Muntu, what happened to General Muntu when he formed Ant? I'm sure you listened to each and every detail. I cannot finish it. Uh, it was a bit long uh, for the sake of time. I believe the most important part you listened. That was Patrick Amriat, the president of the uh, Forum for Democratic Change, a political party. You can call it FDC. For now, uh, I request you to keep the details of that audio in your mind because I'm going to get back to that audio later. I, 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 I'll use it as a reference at a later time. Now, referring to the 2005 Ugandan Emirate Party referendum that actually costed Uganda 12.5 US million dollars, you need to know that Uganda is a multi party system. In a political sense, a multi party system is a political system in which multiple political parties across the political spectrum run for national elections and all have the capacity to gain control of government offices separately or in coalition. Currently, Uganda has 26 registered political parties. For the past 20 years, the FDC party, now led by Patrick Amriat, it has been the one driving the wheels of the opposition vehicle. Ugandan is genuinely supported BSJ, just like they supported everyone that came before him. Those that shook seven, the likes of Dr. Paul Kawanga Semwageli during those times of 1996, the late Alhaj Nasser Ntege Sebagala during those times of 2001. Besige stood four times, but he was unlucky to unseat Museven, however much he won him a couple of times. But he played a big role in the struggle to get rid of seven dictatorship, you know, opening people's minds and all the like. Just like the support shifted from Dr. Paul Kawanga Semogeli, then Al Haj Nasan Tege Sewagala, then to SJ. Looking at the events that unfolded these past three to four years, one can confirm and testify that we are back to the same spot. And this fact can't be discounted that the same support also shifted from SJ to now His Excellency Bobby Wine. Uh, for His Excellency Bobby Wine, I'm not going to expound more on him. I am forced to believe you know the person of bobby wine all i can say his coming took everyone by surprise no one anticipated his coming actually no one saw him coming and no one anticipated his rise to political fame and the, the massive support he has maybe briefly about him robert chagulani sent him known by his name bobby wine is a ugandan politician singer and actor he's a sharp thorn in seven his shoes that one is a fact and is a former member of parliament for Chadondo East Constituency in Wachiso District in Buganda region. He's the president of the National Inter Platform. He participated in the recent 2021 Sham violent elections where he won Genome 7 by 54.19%. But of course, just like you witnessed if you followed those Sham elections, Museven used all the power of the gun to rig the votes. And he's now illegally the president of uganda now this massive support ugandans of all kinds have towards his excellency uh, bobby wine plus of course the initiatives he spearheads initiatives like people power power national platform and of course a lot more that you've been part of if you follow uganda's politics those that have actually helped in the massive awakening of ugandans especially the young ugandans to active politics to actively get involved in the politics of their country. The educated, the uneducated, the employed, the unemployed, the young, the old. You know, this support actually made the national platform to actually Ghana countrywide support in a space of less than one year when the party was just unveiled. So, this support did not only scare Museven as a person, but also those who were in the seats of the opposition vehicle. In one way or the other, this massive support also did not impress those who had the majority number in the Ugandan parliament then, as they knew their position would be no more once NUP takes over. The recent 
and ongoing attacks on Bobby Wine and NUP as a party and the People Power as a movement, the refusal of the call by His Excellency Bobby Wine to all opposition political parties to unite and forge a way forward. The direct attacks from leaders of other political parties, actually opposition political parties to Bobby Wine as a person and to National Inter Platform as a party is a direct indication that these people were not happy by Bobby Wine's rise to political fame. Maybe because he displaced them of their position as the main opposition in parliament. What can I say? You need to know that we have the opposition that is fighting seven and then we have the opposition that is fighting whoever fights seven and those are the nrm guys they are of course opposing the fight against their warlord dictator seven in some cases some people in the opposition unknowingly unknowingly find themselves on that side now going back to the audio i played at the start of this issue of the opposition supremacy the fight for opposition supremacy in this our struggle to liberate uganda when the president of the fdc was making direct attacks to bobby wine and nup as a party laughing at them as to how they did not wear the victor's crown as bobby wine promised laughing and clapping hands as to how the people power movement and the nup this wave you know is fading away you know maybe let me do the audio again here's the audio the FDC is a party of brave people. And by the way, the wave that swept across the country is now dying away. They called us about failure. They have a moon M70. <laughs> so we ask people who thought our strength relied on General Muntu, what happened to General Muntu when he formed Ant? Now, listening to this, it simply reveals the anger the FDC as a party and its leaders have towards NUP and Bobby Wine as a person. Maybe because he displaced them from their main position as the main opposition in the parliament. Because it's shameful how can an opposition party and the entire leadership attack a fellow opposition party and its leader. It also reveals why the unity Bobby Wine advocated for actually before, during and after elections fell on deaf ears of most of these politicians as we speak now we have people power a movement Museven fears like death he once banned the red ballot and the red overall won by people power supporters he saw a red ballot as a satan you know he feared the red ballot like death this movement that is the people power is not only in uganda but world over a movement actually that gives Museven sleepless nights. He sleeps while planning how to frame and arrest people power supporters and its leaders, how to bribe them, how to coerce them into submission, case in point, the issue of Segilinya and Sewanyana, planning how to sabotage all the activities of people power and NUP and a lot more that you've heard of if you follow Uganda's politics. It is such a movement that unites Ugandans regardless of tribe, class, religion, political affiliations, and all the differences that might exist. Uh, Ugandan is fully embraced and actually understood its true objectives and aims and mission. Ugandan is actually fully embraced and understood its true objectives, aims, and mission as its leaders, led by His Excellency Bobby Wine, and the various volunteers. They bothered so, so, so much to explain, and various volunteers, they bothered so, so, so much to explain to Ugandans of all kinds, in all languages, they understood the true meaning of people power, our power. So, the people power movement, and later NUP, under His Excellency, Bobby Wine, made countless efforts to bring the opposition together. That is before elections, during and actually after. 
calling for unity during and after those sham elections. Countless meetings were held. After those sham elections, His Excellency Bobby Wine, the president of the National Platform, signed a letter calling upon political parties, opposition political parties, suggesting meetings with them at their respective offices to have a chat, to dialogue and find ways on how to move forward as a united front. But none positively responded. I remember it was only one political party and that was the Gemma party. Only FDC said they were not interested in uniting with the political novices. In their tweet, they said, why does NUP want to tap from the knowledge of NUP, you know, the experienced? In brief, they were not ready and they accompanied their not being ready with the direct attacks to NUP. I'm sure you remember those days for those who follow the things. Now, recently, the FDC and WSG created their new pressure group, their own pressure group. And the same people are calling upon His Excellency Bobby Wine to abandon the people power and join them in their new pressure group. Of which there is already people power. That is so well understood by people. That is not only in Uganda, but world over. That is not only in the central region, but across the entire country. For those who followed the, the recent sham elections, you can testify. Wherever Bobby Wine went, wherever NUP went, you could see people, everyone well versed with the word people power, our power. It's world over. So, it doesn't require you to have masters in political science to understand that the creation of these new pressure groups is simply fight for opposition supremacy and that uh, to be point blank dr bcg is trying to relaunch his political career and an effort for the FDC to launch a presidential bid for Kwago in the coming elections however much they always front the issue of they are not always interested in elections but then at last they come up with the candidates so it doesn't require you to have masters in political science to understand these facts but again, they have their serious concerns because an article in Daily Monitor reveals that FDC members, on the other hand, accuse Mr. Chagulany Bobby Wine in particular of being self-centered. And in this case, they are referring to an incident in 2017, those days when Chagulany Bobby Wine had just joined the parliament. Miss Betty or Awol Ochan, then leader of opposition in parliament, had sought to appoint Bobby Wine in the shadow cabinet as Minister of Information, but Bobby Wine turned it down claiming that he was busy. They are saying that he has never wanted to work with other opposition people. The article reveals an FDC official said of Mr. Chagulan on a condition of anonymity so he could speak freely. So that is a claim they have as well, maybe some of the reasons as to why they are starting their own uh, pressure group. FDC president also referring to NUP recently said in a tweet that leading opposition in parliament doesn't have to lead any struggle against the dictatorship if they don't wish, are not prepared, or have no capacity to. That is the president of the FDC referring to NUP that being that they are the majority in the parliament does not need that they have to lead the struggle. So one may ask where does this leave the opposition and the fight for freedom? Being that we are on this our podcast of Uganda's journey to freedom, I personally can say that all these are part of the success story. You all know there is no smooth and direct route to destiny. It's always a zigzag. It always has ups and downs. It's always this is, it is a journey of such opposing entities, you know. So, but this of course continues to create division amongst the opposition plus supporters of change in this our country, Uganda. Some are left confused. But the good news is that the unity that is being capitalized here is the one about or the one between the leaders. The common Ugandan is down there are way far ahead. They united long time ago. Only that such kind of new uh, creations, they cannot spare some. Yeah, they will, of course, they will take some few, you know, because not everyone understands the same way others do. One may still ask, is it bad for them to start their own pressure group? 
And my answer would be no, it's not bad. It's actually very good so long as it doesn't derail the struggle in one way or the other. It's actually very good, especially if there isn't any pressure group with similar interests and objectives. It's a good idea. It's not bad. And uh, as I wind up on this issue, I will say if it wasn't for the love for position and its priority, we wouldn't be here discussing opposition supremacy. But due to the fact that to some people, politics is a daily job, they always look at it as an income generating activity and of which to be so you have to have a position that generates that income in the end you'll end up in the position of fighting for any composition that threatens your position i'll end here for today and you've been listening to episode two of our podcast series by jb Mwange. that is uganda's journey to freedom you can check it out and the other episodes on our YouTube channel in the name JB Mwonge on our website www.jbmwonge.com stroke podcast. You can as well find it on Apple Casts, Google Podcasts, Anchor.fm stroke JB Mwonge. You can find it on Breaker and of course anywhere else. But you can simply just search on Google Uganda's Journey to Freedom by JB Mwonge and you'll get all the other episodes. Let's catch up in the next episode. That will be episode three. Uh, this coming weekend.